In this video, I will provide you with a couple of different framing methods that can be used to frame a stair landing that will have a wall underneath it like this one and attached to either one wall or to a corner wall. And this is probably going to be the most common and that will be where you have a rim joist and you're going to nail into the joist. And if you're using inch and a half construction standard lumber like we're using two by six here in the video, then you can probably get away with using 16D nails. And those nails will be used for everything except for the joist hangers most of the time. And in our next example, we are going to have two walls that form a corner and in this situation the landing will be built basically the same except you're going to be able to nail this joist to the wall framing and you will even be able to attach the end of the joist here by using a angled nailing pattern like this one where the angled nail can go through the joist and then through the other joist and then into the wall framing stud and of course if you are using a nailing gun that's going to be quite easy to do Next up, let's take a look at the inverted or concealed hanger like we have here. And this is a hanger that does not have flanges on the outside, but has them located on the inside, as you can see here when we take out the joist. So not a bad idea to use something like this, better than I believe is stronger, and it won't require a lot more materials, just one more 2x4 along with an extension of this joist. Now this idea here seems like it would provide a lot more structural strength because of a wall here and sitting on top of a framing stud here, and will definitely be something to consider if you're going to have the upper stair stringer sitting on top of this part of the lane. Landing. Let's go ahead and zoom in on it here, give you an idea of what we're looking at. End nailing into the ledger here, into the framing stud, and then of course nailing the 2x4 to the framing stud. View from the other side. And if we need it to be a little stronger, we can always make this a doubler and then just have double studs here. And of course this might be required depending upon the weight above that will be transferring from the stringers down to this section of the landing. And if we wanted to make it a little stronger we could get rid of the doubler and then put a beam in here with a solid post so another good idea here the next idea would be to extend the joist like we did with the supporting beam here and then have it sitting on top of some two by fours. So this method here is going to require a little more materials and we will block between the joists instead of using a ledger. And this method right here could save you a few dollars depending upon the price of lumber and the price of building hardware during that period of time. And the joist will in-nail into the wall framing studs along with the blocks and and of course you can angle the nails again at either end here we're angling them into the block. So again, another idea that will provide you with a stronger landing. Another option would be to frame the landing on top of another wall. So we would be using two walls here view from the other side and this would provide you with a sturdy landing no doubt about it because we don't have to worry about any hangers loosening up over time and in our last example we're going to move the wall and put it on top of the framing plate here so that we won't be using as much lumber and I would strongly suggest to run at least one of the framing plates all the way through to the next stud to give you a little more support to prevent the wall here from leaning either in or out. But again, this is just another option. You don't have to do it. Just make sure that this is braced and structurally supported so it is not going to move while you're building the stairs. So again, another good idea. And then you would install the sheathing and then just build a wall on top of the landing. And this method here might provide you with, and in my opinion it would be difficult to figure out if this method is stronger than the previous method because of the way it ties into the wall framing. And even though it might look awesome, I could still see some problems when building the wall on this side and keeping everything straight. I mean I could just see this right here being built out a little bit, but again that's going to depend upon how 
how much time you spend making sure that this is straight. And something like this could take a little longer to build, meaning that it's going to cost more in labor and it might be cheaper to just build another wall like this one and put it next to this wall. In this video, I am going to provide you with something that I don't see a lot of people doing, but hopefully after you watch this video, you will start doing it. And that will be using your pattern that you cut. You're not always going to be able to lay everything out to where you're going to miss all of the knots or the lumber imperfections with your stair stringer pattern. But again, there's a way around that also, because if you have a pile of lumber, all you need to do is select the best board out of all of them for your pattern. But this isn't always going to be the case if you have only three boards to pick from because that's all you ordered with your lumber load. And of course, if you're hand selecting the lumber, then pick the best pieces of lumber you can find at the lumber yard for your stair stringers. Now you're not going to have any problem with clear lumber or premium select lumber that doesn't have very many knots in it or the knots are very small. However, that's not going to be the case if you have a piece of lumber that has cracks on the end and even a few knots. And for those of you who are not familiar with building stairs, what we usually do is cut one stair stringer. We lay it out, we cut it, we double check all the measurements, and then we use it as a pattern. We put it on top of our next piece of lumber and then just simply draw all of the lines that we need to cut all the way around the stringer, remove the pattern, and then cut this piece out. And then we will have three or four, however many stringers we need, to build our stairs. Now this is something I see a lot of people doing and that's either they order the smallest pieces of lumber they can to save money or maximize profits or you are not worried about this breaking. And again, this is not going to be the end of the world. If you have a crack that runs up here and after you cut the stringer, you cut the notches out for your stair stringer, this section breaks off. You can usually just grab some nails or screws and then refasten it, connect it back together. So that is not going to be the end of the world if that does happen most of the time. But that's not the reason why I'm making the video. I'm making the video to provide you with a few ideas you can use to avoid that problem. However, by moving it over a little bit to avoid most of the cracks, you can end up with some problems with the knots. And knots on the corner can break off and of course be difficult to nail through. And the main area you are not going to want to have any knots will be at the bottom or the top where you need to connect it to the other framing members. So what do you do? It's nice to buy at least two foot longer lumber than you're actually going to need so you have some room to move the stringer back a little bit in either direction to avoid as many knots or cracks as you possibly can can. And this is going to be a bigger problem with bigger knots. However, that will not be your last option because you can always flip the board over, flip it upside down, and then try moving the stringer to a desired location to where you can miss most of the knots. Now I also need to point out that this is not going to be the best location for a big knot. And you might need to move the stringer over a little bit to locate the knot in a section of the stringer where you're going to have more lumber. And this could even be a bigger problem if you have longer treads and taller risers. And hopefully that makes sense. This is a bad area and this is a good area. And you can always move it a little bit in either direction. Be right next to the knot or even come in a little into the knot if you need to avoid other knots. However, this is not going to work all the time. You are going to come to a piece of lumber every once in a while that you are not going to be able to work with. And in my opinion, I wouldn't use it if you didn't have to. And I will end the video at that because I do understand sometimes people are going to order four pieces of lumber and they could simply use the worst stair stringer in a place where it will be structurally secured next to a framing wall or sitting on top of a wall somehow to where these knots are not going to be a problem. 
problem. So as always, if you enjoyed the video or you learned something from it, then hit the thumbs up button. And thanks for watching. Also, don't forget to visit our website. We have an organized list of our videos there. You might have a difficult time finding that anywhere else.